Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strays from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us say together the Jubilate, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 86. Please read responsively by the whole verse. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. My God, save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I will call daily upon you. Comfort the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. 
For you, Lord, are good and gracious and of great mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my humble supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you answer me when I call. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any deeds like yours. All nations that you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. Indeed, you are God alone. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. O knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and will praise your name forevermore. For great is your mercy toward me. You have delivered my life from the nethermost pit. O God, the proud have risen up against me, and the company of violent men have sought after my life, and have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord God, are full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, plenteous in goodness and truth. O turn then unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give your strength unto your servant, and help the son of your handmaid. Show me some token of your favor, that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, Lord, have been my helper and comforter. The reading for tonight is from the Book of Wisdom, 12th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. For neither is there any God besides you, whose care is for all. For your strength is a source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when men doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. You are sovereign in strength, but you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the one who is righteous must be kind, and you have filled your sons with good hope, because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading tonight is from the eighth chapter of Romans, beginning at the 18th verse. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not co worth comparing with the glory is, that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves. We have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew in the 13th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain... Then the weeds appeared also, and the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, <clears throat> lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat, along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. His disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. God is so good and knows us so well. He explains things in a way each of us can understand. If you've got a junior high school brain like mine, you like to keep it very simple, such as Jesus' command to love God and love your neighbor. Or if you're a thinker, Jesus also explains things in parables, giving us the freedom to explore how to receive and live out His love and His wisdom. Matthew chapter 13 is a perfect example. It contains two parables that help us think out what it really means to love God and love your neighbor, the vertical and horizontal of the Christian life, loving God, loving your neighbor. Last week, Henry explained the love God part, that vertical part between us and our Father in heaven, through the parable of the sower in chapter 13. It's about the state of our hearts, our personal relationship with God. As Jesus said, our hearts can be hard soil, indifferent to the love and wisdom of God, Or maybe we have some rocks in the soil of our heart, perhaps thoughts or wounds that deflect faith and so challenges make us wither at times. Or there are thorns, the distractions and temptations of life which stunt our spiritual growth. These states of heart can prevent us from being good, fruitful soil prevent us from living out the love and wisdom of Jesus. Our gospel reading from today, from chapter 13, the parable of the tares or the weeds, helps us think about living out that horizontal part of Jesus' command, love your neighbor. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, But the enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat. The wheat, rather. So, let's say you are a good field hand trying to help this crop grow without weeds. Or let's say you're just trying to be a good seed, a good piece of wheat growing along with the others. You're not indifferent, superficial, or distracted. Or at least you're working on cleaning up the soil of your heart. You are consciously growing with the sun of Jesus' wisdom, drinking in the rain of Jesus' love. Whether you're tending the field or just trying to be a good stalk of wheat, you look around and you notice some weeds. Maybe you've been worried for years about the power and hypocrisy of politicians the double talk and bias of the media, the craziness of our culture. Maybe the uncertainty of COVID guidelines and COVID politics are driving you batty. Or maybe you're frustrated about protesters, about rioting, and the accusations of racism in our country these days. No matter what side you're on, Such natural wondering is why the field hands in this parable ask the farmer, do you want us to go gather them? Do you want us to go rip out those bad weeds from among the good wheat? After all, Jesus said the enemy sows those bad weeds, right? Well, Jesus' response to the field hands in the story is precautionary, to say the least. Jesus says, no, don't go rip out those weeds. For in gathering the weeds, in identifying them, and ripping them out, you might root up the good wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, when I will tell the reapers, Gather those weeds, bind them in bundles to be burned, and the wheat will then be gathered into the barn. Jesus' cautious words remind me 
of my dad's theory of lawn care, which was, if it's green, it's part of the lawn. If he lived in Midland, he probably would have said, if it's brown, it's part of the lawn, right? Apparently, even the most experienced field hand wants to handle those weeds a bit too quickly, a bit too roughly. To make sure we slow down and let Jesus do his job at the harvest, that is, at the time of ultimate divine judgment, Jesus inserts a biblical exclamation point by repeating his perspective again. I will send my angels and they will gather all the causes of sin and all the lawbreakers and throw them into the furnace. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. This precaution about being quick to judgment and quick to condemnation of those weeds, that is, individual people or groups of weeds, types of people, is apparently part of our sinful nature because Jesus says it again and again throughout the Gospels. Jesus called out his own people because they presumed to be the sole owners of God's grace. Jesus pointed out the hypocrisy of religious leaders because they doled out grace like it was theirs to give. Jesus identified the presumptive sinfulness of a crowd one day, preventing them from stoning an adulterous woman. Jesus described how a loving father welcomed home his prodigal son, a bad weed if there ever was one. Jesus' command to love God, love your neighbor, without snap judgment and snap condemnation couldn't be more clear. And it also isn't easy to figure out how to live out that command in a world like ours, which is so full of weeds. Maybe there is relief, though, in Jesus' way. To love God, all we need to do at core is be honest about the state of our hearts, the goodness and richness of the soil, whether there are a few rocks in there or hard places, and ask God to help us have that fertile soil of trust and willingness. To love others, especially those weeds out there, it seems that Jesus just wants us to do our own job, our job of loving, even if we disagree with folks, and let him do his job. Jesus has to sort out who's right, who's wrong in the end, not us. That's not part of our job description. Ultimate judgment is a burden that we don't have to bear. Thank goodness. Thank God and thank you, Jesus. And I want to just trust you with that burden and find relief. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we need your help, admittedly, with this wonderful command to love our neighbors in a very troubled world. Otherwise, you wouldn't have talked to us so much about it. You want us to have good, clean soil in our own hearts, to be good wheat, to learn, follow, and share the truth of your love. Yet, Lord Jesus, you also call us not to judge or condemn others quickly. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to speak by your Holy Spirit personally in each of our hearts about how you would have us live that out in our relationships, our opinions, our words, our actions in a world that seems so full of weeds. Lord God, we want to and we need to shine like the sun in your kingdom. We want to be good wheat. Show us the way, Father. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Let us respond to God's Word revealed in Scripture and through teaching with the statement of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, our King, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the first day of the week, you conquered sin put death to flight, and gave us the hope of everlasting life. Redeem all our days by this victory. Forgive our sins, banish our fears, make us bold to praise you and to do your will, and steal us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for Sue Bear, Father Walter Barrientos, Lynn Beck, Debbie Bird, Bill Carricker, Adelinda Carl, Pat Denham, Nancy Eberly, Michael Ensmiger, Maybelline Green, Dixie Haketon, Mary Hutto, Julianne, Shelley Munoz, Oliver and Hannah. Father Henry, Colleen, Abby, and Annie Pendergrass, Travis Poner, Richard, Steve Sell, Art Wybush, and all who are in any trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Ali Moore and all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
Let us pray also for those celebrating birthdays this week, Carolyn Harkrider, Jeff Briley, Catherine Hurd, Nelda Gillahan, Joe Jensen, and Mackenzie Barr. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those celebrating anniversaries this week, Lauren and Nathan Knowles. O God, you have so blessed the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessings upon these your servants that their lives together may continue to reflect your love and forgiveness and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by your word you laid the foundations of the earth, set the bounds of the sea, and still the wind and the waves. Surround us with your grace and peace, and preserve us through this pandemic. By your spirit, lift up those who are ill, strengthen those who work to heal and to comfort them, and fill us with the hope of your new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray a prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.